Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Rudy from Hockey Night in Canada and Sportsnet and I'm also a big believer and supporter of McMahon, Calgary and area. Uh, I think I first heard of McMahon about three, four years ago. A friend of mine, Karen Gosby and I were going to do the lunchtime gala. We're going to be, be speakers at the gala, and uh, but more so, Karen and I both wanted to learn more about uh, McMahon, Calgary, and area and what they do in the community. And so we we're lucky enough to be taken on a tour of some of the facilities. And uh, man alive, we we're just blown away by uh, what they do here in the community of Calgary. Uh, they provide over 20 services. Uh, they help, I think, over 2,600 individuals yearly. I mean, that's a staggering number, including my friend, Sun Tran, that uh, I'm glad you can join us, Sun. And uh, I know that you're an aspiring musician. I want to hear just a little bit about that. But uh, thanks for joining us. And how are you doing, Sun? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. So before we talk about McMahon and your affiliation with them and how they've helped you, uh, how have you held up during the pandemic? Because I know even for my own family, uh, it has hit us hard at times. I know my own mental health as well has taken a bit of a beating from it. And I've had highs and lows and sort of comes in waves. And uh, yeah, I, I'd like to hear about how you're doing. Um, so far, I'm doing okay, like better now than I was before. Um, in the first few weeks, it was weird adjusting to everything. And like, even like students, even from young to like older students in like college and everybody, Every, once everything shut down everybody could be like yeah no school right like, no work whatever but like I had my own like mental health problems and mm -hmm. when you like isolation is a scary place yeah especially for someone who has like mental illness so even we feel alone in the biggest of crowds let's say a concert for example right you feel like no one's around you and you're up facing all these demons but once you're in isolation they those demons in your head become louder and you feel even more alone and that sucked for me because like oh. for the couple months there I was like man if this is how life is for the next however long this blows yeah so. you're so right you couldn't say it more uh, clearly for us <laughs> I appreciate that so yeah. uh, I want to hear about uh, your an aspiring musician tell me a little bit about yourself uh about myself um Pretty much, I never really like thought I would be a musician or a writer or anything. I only really wrote to escape my thoughts and like trying to write it down to see that come out of my body and then throwing that piece of paper away, thinking those thoughts would go away, but they never went away until I was about 17, 18. I really got in a really dark place like none of my friends knew none of my families knew because yep. i didn't want any one of them to know especially as a guy like we're supposed to be the tough ones right we're, we mm. shouldn't be talking about that like we <laughs> got to put on our armor put on a face carry on with our day but once that started hitting me harder i got into that place and then i really just hit my low and that's when suicide became a thought in my mind. And then I attempted it for, I think the third time. And I, after that, it was a really scary place because I survived clearly. Mm -hmm. um, in my mind, I was just like the why me started to happen. Like, why do I have to go this? What did I do so wrong in my life that this had to happen? And I thought it was some form of like punishment and the first thought that came to my mind a lot was like, man, you can't even die right. Mm -hmm. Like, if you can't die right, what are you doing? What are you going to do right with your life? And then months after I got out of the hospital, I couldn't work for two months because I wasn't stable to work. Yeah. So I was at home in my bed doing nothing. So I started writing even more. And then I was like, one day I was just like, man, somebody's got to feel the same way as I do. Somebody out there has to. And if they don't, so be it. But I was, at that time, I was looking for someone to just be like, hey, it's okay. You're going to be okay. And I'll walk with you. And then I started writing more and more. And then I got creative with it. And I was like, why don't I just put, put out songs? Mm. If it's going to connect one way or another, somebody's going to connect to it. Somebody needs to hear this story. 
because I was there once too. And if they need some light to get out of their own darkness, they have me right in their mind. Wow, what an inspiration. Thanks for sharing that. I mean, your openness is just so cool to listen to and uh, talk about bravery and uh, unreal, son. Um, so, uh, you know, one thing I got, I, I learned a lot of things again, and it reminded me about uh, our daughter, Caitlin, that's been going through things for a lot of years. But yeah, uh, when you were talking about you can't even die right, you know, how hard we are on each other or on ourselves, right? Like, we're yeah. so cruel to our own selves all the time and that, that's so great that you mentioned that because so many people do it so I know you started with uh, McMahon in 2015 what led you there um, I was making very poor decisions on my part I was very reckless with my life I didn't really care I was that teenager that was like living life on the edge wanted to be the cool guy wanted to do all this and that and then made a lot of mistakes and then um, that led me there and Looking back, I, I'm very happy and glad that I ended up there. Yeah, right. And you were part of the restart program, is that correct? I was, yes. Yeah, I was there for 10 weeks. And each week, we just had different activities, different things, like learning different strategies to just cope and having other people there that were like going through similar or different things and everybody just talked about it. And that was like, it kind of felt like a really safe place for everybody. Right. And so what were some of those uh, things, strategies that you learned um, at McMahon? Um, they gave us a booklet that was like a, a hundred ways to cope with stress or anxiety. And I still have it with me. Mm -hmm. um, you ever look at it every once in a while? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I took a lot from it too. Yeah. Um, like going for walks or calling up a friend saying, Hey, how are you? And it could be that little, littlest thing that could change somebody's life or day or whatever it could be. It could be a phone call. It could be a text and saying, how are you? And absolutely. Yeah, I know. And, uh, just for the people watching this, I just want to remind them that, uh, McMahon Calgary and area, they have their 40 for 40 campaign right now. Um, what are some of the uh, mental health strategies that you learned that, uh, at McMahon that you really feel that made a, an incredible difference. Like it's, it's great to get a book with a hundred things, but that's yeah. a lot. They're, they're, yeah. You have to focus in on like three or four things. Cause I have to tell you, like, even in my day, uh, I'm a, I'm a TV personality. And before I go on air, I remind myself that I'm good and I can do it. It's so yeah. simple, but it, you know, you would think that after 21 years on live television, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't doubt myself, but I do. Yeah. Um, a lot of things is that I take from it, like specifically, one of the things was writing. And a lot of people don't like to write about it. Some mm -hmm. like to even on, on your phone, there's a voice memo app and you can use that. Or even sitting down for a coffee with a friend that I, that's what I took from it. Another thing was just simply as it's easier said than done, but be open about it and not be afraid and like know that you're not alone. And a lot of times, especially like, like you and I with our mental health is like, we feel like we are alone. And right now with all like the mental health, like it, I'm sure those numbers are crazy right now, especially after the pandemic yeah. and everything. Yeah. And I think we need a lot more of, services right now than ever and a place where you can feel that you're accepted and open well because like once you're in that meeting everybody's talking about it and you realize oh they have a similar story to me or like i can connect to that person that starts to open up yourself and like remove yeah. layers of that wall that you've built up yeah so, so yeah son the canadian mental health association will tell uh canadians uh, that one in five suffers. Uh, I say that's incorrect. I say like four and five or five and five. Now, maybe it's not debilitating or haven't gone through the things that you've gone through, but I think yeah. all of us have our own things in some little way. So at what point were you comfortable sharing your story? Did you have to go to McMahon first or were you, were you um, telling people that you needed some, some help? For once I went to McMahon, I was still really young. 
and I guess I still am now I'm only 20 <laughs> but um I was like 15 and I was like no I don't want to talk about it because I had I had put up that face and I put on that mask and be like I'm good I don't need nobody and then the more I told myself that the more I needed somebody mm-hmm. and then the moment I started like releasing music and like sharing my story that was when I was like man this feels good because like knowing somebody somewhere heard that part of the story and yeah. whether they connect or not that's mm-hmm. enough for me what's the reaction you've had from people because I know uh, when our daughter Caitlin was going to come out and share her story in 2013 I have to tell you son I was petrified of social media yeah. I thought we're going to oh, talk yeah. right all the haters and yeah. uh found out it was nothing but love um yeah like social media is a big platform and it's a very scary place too and it's also a very dangerous place because somebody can always just go on the screen and type anything they want yeah um that was another fear for me was every time i release something i'm just like oh man is this going to be good enough or like should i even put this out should i say this and i think a couple weeks ago i released like an eight episode series on my YouTube and it was just completely about my story from like when I was a three until now. And I was like, man, the things that came out of that and like, it's crazy that I I even remember any of that, but that was a very big fear. And one of the most crazy reactions that I got was like, especially like my family and like my friends that like, didn't know. And they're like, Oh, you felt this way, but you were so happy then. I'm like, I know that's the thing. That's the thing we got to watch out. And somebody can have the brightest smile on their face, but in their yeah. mind, it's a whole living hell. Wow. You are such an inspiration, bud. So I want to thank you, son, for coming on and uh, sharing your story. Uh, just so much to take away from this. And so for the people watching this, just know this is why McMahon uh, Calgary and area is so important. And this is why the 40 for 40 campaign is important to me. Now, I truly understand, listen, um, uh, not only because of the pandemic all the time, but certainly during these times, it's very difficult emotionally and mentally uh, and financially. I know that uh, a lot of people are having difficult times, but if, if you are in the position where you have a little bit to share, you can please help the uh, McMahon Calgary and area 40 for 40 campaign, uh, visit mcmahoncalgary.ca to help out. Thanks so much for uh, watching everybody. And uh, as I always sign off, the Rudies are sending our love. Great chatting with you, son. Thanks, bud. Thank you. Have a good one. Thank you.